Hello everyone in Medical Scribe. I'm Karar Haider, student at Baghdad Medical College. In the previous video, we began with the deep fascia that will be explained in three videos. In the first video, we talked about an introduction to the deep fascia, and we explained its structure and the thickness difference of the deep fascia between the regions. All of that was in the last video. While in today's video, we will explain the deep fascia subtypes or the deep fascia classification. The deep fascia that we defined in the previous video as a dense, organized, and fibrous connective tissue will be exist in many regions. And in every region it exists, it will perform a specific function and have specific features. So we have about four forms that the deep fascia can present with in different regions of the body. It may present with other forms, but these four is the main ones. The first form is the intermuscular septa. This form of deep fascia will group many muscles that either share the same function or have the same innervation. These septa will group them together. In a way, they will make what we call it the facial compartments, which mean a group of muscles grouped by a thick sheet of fibrous connective tissue. Or in other words, the deep fascia will group them together. And keep in your mind that these compartments are very important, because if infection or a tumor occurs in one compartment, this compartment will limit the ability of the infection or the tumor to affect the other compartments because of the intermuscular septa that work as a barrier between the compartments. So this is the first form of the deep fascia. The second form of the deep fascia is the investing fascia. This investing fascia in fact are extensions from the internal surface of the deep fascia. And this investing fascia will invest and surround the deeper structures such as investing individual muscles and surrounding neurovascular bundles. So this is the second form of the deep fascia. The third form of the deep fascia that can be present with is the subserous fascia. This form of deep fascia will lie between the internal surfaces of the musculoskeletal walls and also between the serous membranes that lining the body cavities. Let's explain more what I mean. If we have two structures, one on the left and one on the right, these two structures will be lined by a membrane called the serous membrane. So between these membranes, there will be a space. This space will be filled by this subserous fascia. And the example of this form is the endothoracic fascia, the endoabdominal fascia, and we have the endopelvic fascia. So this is the third form of the deep fascia. Well, the last form of the deep fascia is the retinaculum. These retinacula are thick bands of deep fascia that found around the tendons near certain joints, such as the wrist joint and the ankle joint. What they will make is that this retinacula will hold the muscle tendons in place during joint movements and prevent them from bowing. And keep in your mind that these retinacula are not part of the muscles. What they make is to hold the tendons in place during joint movements. All right, now we will talk about the last thing in our video which is there's a classification that classifies the deep fascia into two subtypes, which are the aponeurotic fascia and the epimesial fascia. The aponeurotic fascia is a fibrous white sheet. This aponeurosis can be a point of origin or insertion for the muscles, such as the thoracolumbar fascia. And this subtype is thicker than the second type and we can easily separate it from the underlying muscle layer. So this is the first subtype. While the epimesial fascia, which we call it sometimes the epimesium, 
is the second subtypes of the deep fascia, which is a connective tissue sheath that surrounds the skeletal muscle. This subtype of deep fascia will be thinner than the aponeurotic fascia and it will be tightly connected to the muscle. That because of the septa which penetrate the muscle layer. So it will be tightly connected with the muscle. So these were almost everything regarding the deep fascia subtypes. And that's it. I hope what I say makes sense. See you next video. And goodbye.